In this question, we're given a continuous function of time, and we're asked to sample that and turn it into a discrete time signal. So this is continuous, and what we want is discrete. So a discrete time signal would be a function of n. So somehow we need to replace t with n times uppercase t. Let's call it ts to represent the sampling period. And the function just happens to also be t for temperature. So we need to rep replace that. And we're given the sample period of 5 seconds. So um, uppercase ts equals 5. So what we're doing is we're rewriting our function, replacing um, lowercase t, replacing that with um, n times 5, or just 5n. So it'll look like um, this. 293 plus 15 e to the minus pi, then 5n. And then that's multiplied by a unit step of 5n. Now, a unit step, if you scale a unit step, nothing happens. It remains a unit step. So u of 5n is just u of n. So we can just write that as u of n. So that's part A. This is now a discrete time signal. Now it's asking for two discrete values, the first and the fourth. So that just involves replacing n here with 0 and then replacing it with 3. It's as simple as that. So. Close that bracket. So t of zero would be two hundred and ninety three plus fifteen e to the zero u of zero, which is just two hundred and ninety three. No, it isn't. It's three hundred and eight. And then do the same. Find t of one. And that's almost 293. So what we're doing is we're just replacing that value of n with the integers 0 and 3. Now for C, it's looking for the final ev eventual value for the temperature. So in this question, what you have is you have a, a, a decay. So as um, T approaches infinity, the time, the temperature, uppercase t, will decrease. And because this is now discrete, we can replace that with n, and then you have these samples, which are separated by 5 seconds. So that's 5, 10, 15. So we've already found um, t of 0, the first sample, and t of 3, that's 1, 2, 3. We found that. Now they want the final temperature. So what they want is t of n. So if you like, it's the limit as n becomes very big of t of n. And you can see, because we've got this, sorry, we've got this term here, it's a e to the power minus n and e to the power minus n will approach zero as n approaches infinity. So we'll end up with 293 plus zero. So it's just 293. We've already seen that um, the value there is 293. Why, did, why do we have a 1 there? That should be a 3.
Okay, for the next part of the question, it's saying, estimate the Nyquist rate. Now, it isn't a band-limited signal, so we're using an, an approximation, and the question has helpfully given us the approximation to use. So we're going to use that approximation to find the Nyquist rate. So um, the approximation is only going to help us to find the bandwidth of the signal. So if we were to sketch the signal in the frequency domain, it might look something like this. And this value we can calculate. This is the 99% um, containment value or the, the effective bandwidth. So we can calculate that. Um, so just put in pi times tan. Well, you just put that in the calculator, basically. Make sure your calculator is in radians. Okay, that's very important. Otherwise, you won't get the right tangent. Okay, so that will give you something very close to 200 radians per second. Okay, so that's useful. That's that value there. And from that, you can calculate the um, bandwidth. So FB equals omega divided by 2 pi. Um, so that'll give you 31.8 hertz. So I've just converted units from radians per second um, to hertz. And the question was, uh, estimate the Nyquist rate. So the Nyquist rate um, is twice the highest bandwidth. And the reason it says estimate rather than calculate is because it isn't band limited. So we're estimating using the 99% containment bandwidth. So that's um, 63.6 hertz. And it says comment on the sample rate used above. Well, the sample rate used above was five seconds. So um, if we were to find the Nyquist period here, that's one over the Nyquist rate, one over 63.6 is 0 0.1, no, it's 0 0.2. 0 0.016 seconds, which is much less than the five seconds used in the question. So the sample period is much smaller, or the sample period that we're using in the question is much higher than the Nyquist rate. In this case, if we want to find the sample rate, that will be 1 over 5, which is 0 0.2 hertz. So the 0 0.2 hertz is much smaller than the Nyquist rate. So what do we call it when our sample rate is much smaller than the Nyquist rate? So the sample rate is smaller than the Nyquist rate. We call that undersampling. So we will definitely suffer aliasing effects and we, we, we will be unable to recover the original temperature variation after sampling. So this is called undersampling. The question asked to comment on the sampling rate used. We can say this is undersampling because it is less than the uh, Nyquist rate of 63.6 63 hertz.